Grand Chief finally laid to rest at Korea Heights. Australia salutes Sir Michael's friendship. And PM questioned over AstraZeneca vaccine. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayre. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Tuesday's news. Grand Chief Sir Michael Somara was finally led, laid to rest at Korea Heights in Wewak this afternoon. The people of East Sipic, family, friends and other dignitaries were present to witness the father of the nation lowered into a tomb on a property he began building several years ago for his final resting place. Earlier, school children lined the road from the foot of Korea Heights to the residence. The soldiers and police stood guard as the hearse carrying the casket was taken through. PNG Defense Force Commander Gilbert Torapo presented a Papua New Guinea flag to Lady Veronica. He said Sir Michael raised this flag on September 16, 1975, and the country is proud of him. There are perhaps hundreds of stories that can be told about Sir Michael Somara's political achievements over his lifetime. Yesterday, Papua New Guinea's national goals and directive principles were highlighted yet again as the Somara blueprint, a set of philosophies, the thoughts of the founding fathers on how Papua New Guinea should be run. It takes the best of both worlds, the old and the new, but encourages Papua New Guineans to hold on to their languages and the wisdom and embedded in their cultural roots. In 1974, when the Constitutional Planning Committee presented its report to the pre-independence government under Chief Minister Michael Somare, there were tensions and uncertainties over the future of the young democracy. It was a bold, difficult step towards unifying a nation of 800 languages. The Constitutional Planning Committee document is a snapshot in time a snapshot of a period of hope and uncertainty. The first paragraph of the report addressed the issues by stating that the country should be allowed to progress while being accommodating of our differences and the demands for secession, autonomy and the distribution of power. It is one of the many instances in the report that the pre-independent Somare government addresses political and ethnic differences. <laughs> While Papua New Guinea has tried its best to manage the differences, the last two weeks have been a celebration of that diversity. Before independence, our founding fathers asked an important question. What kind of a society do we want? It is in the first goal of integral human development that gives us an idea of what the Somare vision was about. The development of the person, the unending improvement of self and the freedom of mind. It says integral human development is not to be made synonymous with material progress. Its definition separates the material physical development, the buildings, the clothes, the cars, from the development of the person, the mind, body and the spirit. As Papua New Guineans came together this week, the national goal and directive principle of human development was given new life. It was and still is a living document. Written into the document is the importance it places on our 800 languages and our traditions. It says people should be literate in either one of their three national languages. But literacy in their own languages should not be discouraged. A young woman said, As new generations of Papua New Guineans are born, the vision remains in the constitution and the national goals and directive principles. The vision of Somare, Narakobi and so many others, like a manuscript, needs to be rediscovered and learned. On independence this September, it will be the first without the Grand Chief. And over the last two weeks, we celebrated his life, his achievements and his vision. But it's a vision already written down in the Constitution and the National Goals and Directive Principle for the present and the future. Scott Wyde, National MTV News, WIWEC. 
The Australian House of Representatives have praised the undivided friendship and bond created by founding father Grand Chief Sir Michael Somari. Prime Minister Scott Morrison says Australia stands by Papua New Guinea during this time of loss and mourning. Morrison said the late Sir Michael honoured Australia and gracefully lowered the Australian flag for Papua New Guinea to rise as a nation in the region. As a mark of respect to the memory of Grand Chief Sir Michael Thomas Samare, I ask all present to rise in their places. Today, both the Prime Minister and Opposition Leader expressed their sadness while praising the leadership of Sir Michael. Prime Minister Scott Morrison says the relationship between the two countries was forged by Sir Michael. He says that legacy will remain as the two countries continue this lasting journey. He understood that free nations are built on democratic institutions and what he called sana, a word from his own language signifying peace, consensus and inclusion. And indeed, those were the hallmarks of his public life and are his legacy. Thanks to his vision and his commitment to Sana, Papua New Guinea's path to independence was a smooth one. The foundations of this new nation were laid in peace. Sir Michael remained a staunch defender of his country's independence, proudly, but always appreciated Australia's unstinting commitment to his homeland and Papua New Guinea's success. While PNG and Australia share history, culture and many other common agendas, Sir Michael's strong leadership built the cornerstones of a democratic country. Morrison says Sir Michael tied the two nations together and many Australians will remember this history. He passed his condolence to the Somare family in Papua New Guinea. High Commissioner Kali, could you please extend to the government and the people of Papua New Guinea, to your Prime Minister, my dear friend James Marape, the sincere condolences of the government and the people of Australia as represented in this people's house. During this time, we are thinking also of Lady Veronica, their children and grandchildren and the entire Samari family. May they, in this time of grief, know the peace of God and may the Grand Chief rest in peace as a good and faithful servant. Meanwhile, Australian opposition leader also shared sympathy and condolence he recalled Sir Michael's first radio broadcast following the hype of independence in 1975. Now we must stand on our own two feet and work harder than ever before. We are indeed masters of our own destiny. Mepela sorry true, long lusum you, Grand Chief. Bel belong mepela ogeta i heavy true. We are very sorry to lose you, Grand Chief. My heart and everyone's hearts are heavy. May you rest in peace. Jack LaPava, Jr., National MTV News. Australian Foreign Affairs Minister Maurice Payne today presented to the Senate a condolence message and highlighted the political life of late Sir Michael Samari. Payne said Sir Michael was an achiever, a peacemaker and a charismatic leader not only in Papua New Guinea but in the region. The Australian Foreign Affairs Minister said Sir Michael's outspoken likeness has touched many during his term as a leader, father and chief. Payne said Australia and its people will continue Continue the good bond with PNG because of Sir Michael. His dedication to public service and national unity helped to create the vibrant and unbroken democracy that Papua New Guinea has been since independence. Australia has a strong relationship with an independent and sovereign Papua New Guinea. Thanks to the groundwork Sir Michael laid for an enduring friendship between our countries. Sir Michael was generous, full of energy and time. He was a model for leadership. In doing all of these things and so much more, Sir Michael spread the magic that his father taught him. Papa, blow country. You're watching National MTV News. We'll be back with more stories after the break. Stay with us.
Welcome back. Today, the Grand Chief Sir Michael Samara took a tour around WeWork for the last time. A drive along the beautiful Many Beach, one stop at his former house at NBC, and then back to the stadium via the Cathedral Road for the final mass. The dawn slowly breaks and cries of the Sipic people echoed into the day. They had stayed up all night with the Grand Chief. Even in death, they still remain committed, loyal to this man from Sipik who broke their hearts when he chose to rest among his people in Wiwak. At 6 a.m., the casket left the stadium for Sir Michael's house at the NBC compound. People crowded around the hearse, still singing their morning songs. When the hearse drove out, they marched after it, almost disrupting the convoy, with some shouting that this may be the last time to see the casket. At the NBC compound, the National Alliance Party was given the first honor to pay their respect. The Grand Chief, a nationalist, formed the National Alliance Party after he left Pangu Party. The party is now led by member for Itapelumi, Patrick Proich. Relatives of Sir Michael and the neighbors were then given the opportunity to pay their respects. At 11 a.m., the casket left the NBC house and proceeded to the Sir Michael Samari Stadium. Men, women and children braved the hot sun waiting for the casket to arrive. The sight of the casket, a reality slowly sinking in. <laughs> Soon after the casket arrived, Lady Veronica arrived, followed by Prime Minister James Marape and other government dignitaries. The mess commenced with the blessing of the casket, the mess celebrated by Cardinal John Ribat. He echoed words of comfort that we are all gathered to give thanks to God for giving us the greatest gift in Sir Michael, a person who drove a national unity. Dalciana Somare Brash spoke on behalf of the family, remembering her father as a very humble person. But no can have chance. Until the lifetime, let me play. Let me look at this black and pasting can. How you black and me play look so how you black and. More tributes followed her speech, then the laying of wreaths. As the mess ended, cries erupted. For many, this is the final goodbye. Paul Barris loaded a casket onto the hearse and escorted up to the burial site at Korea Heights. Shamin Poriambev, National MTV News, WIWAC. The Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare is known to the Tolais as Topalangat Somare. Being born in Rabaul, he was admitted into the Tubuan Society. Yesterday, they honoured his involvement and performed a ritual reserved for big men. In the words of spokesperson Dr. Jacob Simet, it would not have been right to return his body without performing the appropriate rites over him. <laughs> This is part of a ritual process performed for big men by the Tolais. As a member of the Tubuan Society, the Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare, or Top Halangat Somare, was given this honor. I honor him. One plan, one plan. Because the man, I call him Top Halangat. The membership belongs inside the Tubuan Society. Time will carry me. First time I'll admit him. You go inside the tomb one, time him lick lick, lick lick boy. Behind, long end, only being admit him can, lo side blow me pla, lo matu pit. Lo mark him one plaman, or same big plaman, or same topalangat, the selaka in me side walk him. Michael Samara was born in East New Britain in 1936 and was admitted into the Tubuan Society as a boy. Dr. Jacob Simet, who spoke on behalf of the Tolais, described Top Halangat's birth in Rabaul and admittance into the Tubuan Society as providence. Now, it would not have been right for us to have his body in turn without the necessary 
and appropriate rights being performed over him. Prior to self-government and independence, the Gazelle people were politically divided, caught between wanting independence, remaining with Australia, or delaying the process. For several years, they were split and eventually sought help from outside parties. This was when Sir Michael Somare, a young politician then and a member of the Tuborn Society, intervened. Secondly, we have also come because of what he did for us, we believe, we would not have done without his involvement, his directives, and his wisdom. And that's all. Lick, talk, talk, blow me. Lo big man, blow me, pla. We pla so call him. Topalangat, somare. We pla come, lo honor him. Die, blow him. La bien. Why you put him? He go down, lo mat mat. Yesterday, Topalangat was honored as a member of the Tuban Society and for uniting a divided people. Lucy Kopana, National MTV News, WIWEC. The late Grand Chief Sir Michael Somara was faithful to his Catholic faith until the very end. In his sermon today, Cardinal Sir John Ribat reflected on the life of Sir Michael as the person easily forgave, who forgave and advocated for unity. Unity was a message taught by Christ which Sir Michael followed and is a challenge for everyone else to continue. Finding out where the nearest Catholic Church was while on duty travel was part of the late Grand Chief Sir Michael Samara's routine. As Cardinal Sir John Ribart gave his sermon at the funeral today, this was one of the things he recalled. Sir Michael, a devout Catholic, made sure he attended Mass, and today his youngest daughter Dalciana also acknowledged her father's faith and commitment. He was described today as always forgiving. But the one thing that resounds in every message made in his memory is his ability to unite people. The Cardinal said just as Christ prayed for unity, this was what Sir Michael had also hoped for the country. After being admitted to the hospital in February, Cardinal Sir John Ribat was called to celebrate Holy Mass with Sir Michael in hospital. On the 26th, he passed on. Today, the last Holy Mass was conducted before Sir Michael was laid to rest, a devout Catholic till the end. Lucy Copana, National MTV News, WIWEC. As the hearse carrying the Grand Chief left the East Sipic Provincial Assembly for the stadium yesterday, a lone saxophonist began playing the national anthem in his honour. Augustin Yendi was one of the earlier post-independent students of the National Arts School. He said his performance was his personal gratitude to the Grand Chief for allowing for the establishment of, of the Creative Arts School. Regardless of what I'm going to do, I still play because it's my heart. Because my papa, my school is stopped. Now, I'm going to learn music. Now, I must play. My papa, and I will never do it again. It is once, and it's going to be done. I won't play for papa again. And now looking at the Nasfund market report, the Kina closed unchanged at 0 0.2850 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina will buy 0 0.2775 US dollars, 0.3534 Australian dollars, 0.2245 Euro and 29.65 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading lower, coffee, cocoa and copra closed lower. Palm oil closed lower, crude oil is trading higher and copper closed higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 174.82 points higher, 
the ASX 200 is trading at 10.4 points higher and the All Ordinaries is trading at 15.1 points higher. National MTV News continues with more stories after these messages. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. A number of European countries have suspended the rollout of the COVID-19 AstraZeneca vaccine after several side effects of blood clotting affected a number of people in their countries who received the vaccine. This comes after last week when the Marape government approved the use of the AstraZeneca vaccine as by recommendation from the Medical and Scientific Advisory Committee. MTV News asked the Prime Minister if his government was still confident with AstraZeneca vaccine after countries like Germany, Italy and France suspended the rollout in their countries. Adelaide Sirix Curry with this report. Prime Minister James Marpe responding to a question on whether he was aware of a halt of the AstraZeneca vaccine in several European countries. Looked at by our, our scientific team, and they'll be checking all this. So, uh, you know, we're, we're not reckless to bring in vaccines that are, that are harmful to our people. And uh, vaccines that are world-class proven uh, will be brought in. And as I said, I'm willing to be the first guinea pig. During the media conference, Marpa stating he was confident to take lead from Australia as he said their medical standards were high. We're not just looking into one, one spot in vaccine. The vaccines being developed all over the world, we're looking at so that the best uh, vaccine that is trial and use, we use. And uh, uh, by the way, you know, Australian uh, Medical Board, Australian Health Departments are not stupid to introduce uh, bad medicines into Australia. Their standard is much higher, their standard is much tougher. And, uh, uh, it established global country are using vaccines, in my view, you know, and that is safe and the citizens are okay, then uh, we're willing to bring this in. But Germany, France, Italy and other smaller European countries have suspended their vaccination rollout despite WHO's reassurance to continue. Many of the countries stating they would conduct their own investigations before continuing the rollout. Today's meeting, I've asked Health Department to tidy specific vaccine protocols to ensure that we know what to do when vaccines arrive and our health workers are crucial people that we want to we, we want to really protect them in this first instance when we're in these red states. Adelaide Sirx Kari National MTV News. The month of March 2021 is anticipated to be a busy month for PNG with further risks for high local transmission of COVID-19. As of two days ago, the number of cases confirmed to be positive has surged past the 2,000 mark, coupled with an additional five deaths. A large number of cases have been reported from the National Capital District and 19 of the other 21 provinces. And at Cora reports. The rise in community transmissions in recent weeks outside healthcare settings have largely been blamed on negligence on the part of citizens and the state's failure in enforcing mandatory safety measures. Transmissions are now occurring within provinces as well as being imported from one province to another. As of Sunday, 14th March 2021, 97 new COVID-19 cases and an additional five deaths were reported bringing the country's total of confirmed cases up to 2,269 and 26 deaths. The highest number of cases coming from the nation's capital with 26 cases were Sipik, Eastern Highlands, East New Britain, Central and Millen Bay Province, which until last year has not reported any new cases until now with eight new cases. All five new deaths have come from NCD. Close to 55,000 tests have been conducted so far in the country. However, due to the lack of large-scale population level testing means that these exceptions could be misleading and the number of positive cases might be higher than presumed. The uncertain state of PNG's health facilities suggests that the country may be already approaching a limit to possible containment. Testing facilities in NCD are seeing an influx since COVID-19 cases began to surge over two weeks ago. The Rita Flynn Testing Facility and the St. John drive through at the Tarum Aquatic Center is experiencing even longer queues of people waiting to get tested. 
While the pandemic controller is urging citizens to take the measures seriously, there is an even greater need for enforcement to mitigate the rising impact of positive cases. The Prime Minister in a recent conference has already indicated that a nationwide lockdown is imminent while waiting for the AstraZeneca doses that are due to arrive in April. Annette Cora, National MTV News. Six COVID-19 positive patients were discharged at their own request at the Mount Hagen General Hospital's isolation center on Sunday. They threatened to harm the health staff because they wanted to be released to go home and self-isolate. As of today, all schools in the province have been suspended by the Western Highlands Provincial COVID-19 Task Force Committee. This comes after many teachers tested positive for COVID-19. The suspension of classes is to allow students and teachers who have contracted the virus to self-isolate. It was recommended by the provincial health authority to suspend classes after discovering a number of teachers and students tested positive with COVID-19. WHPHA says most of the positive cases are through community transmission from people traveling in from the hotspots such as Port Mosby, Western Province and Eastern Highlands. So far, the province has recorded three deaths in the last two weeks and 64 positive cases. Most of the cluster cases came from the second death of a person from the Keltiga area outside Mount Hagen City. This is also the place where the six positive cases are, who threatened the isolation center health workers so they could go home and self-isolate. It is believed they were scared to be isolated at the center. The virus is spreading fast in the number of clusters in schools, businesses, churches and community gatherings. Those who have tested positive are advised to self-isolate, while those with extreme cases are being isolated at the isolation center. The center is also full as it can only accommodate 12 people. Vasanata Yama, National MTV News, Mount Hagen. With the recent increase in positive COVID-19 cases reported in Papua New Guinea, the peak bodies representing business, the private sector and development partners are calling on its members to take the lead in promoting and implementing necessary COVID-19 prevention protocols. Papua New Guinea Chamber of Commerce and Industry and Business Council of PNG are reminding businesses to implement the Nupla Pasin strategy at every workplace. The following measures under the Nupla Pasin are aimed to protect employees, clients and the general public at all workplaces. As the voice of business, the private sector and development partners, they are reminding all its members to ensure that all measures are taken to protect everyone from COVID-19. This is a shared responsibility which everyone must play their part in addressing. The PNG CCI and BCPNG acknowledge the efforts taken by the government to contain the spread of COVID-19 and stand ready to assist where it can as partners in this challenge. Police in the Highlands, Eastern and Command are tracking the administrators of two Facebook page pages which are posting defamatory and misleading information against Police Commissioner Manning, the judicial ordered Kandipurikant seat in Kundiawa. Eastern and Deputy Commander ACP Joseph Tondop is urging disputed parties and their supporters to report any ill conducts by police to the Internal Investigation Unit instead of posting online to cause harm. The Facebook pages of Team AM and Condep Today have posted press releases by Alfred Manasse expressing his disappointment on the manner in which his scrutineers and supporters have been treated by police over the weekend in Kundiawa. Manasse alleged that they were confronted by police on Friday night to leave the accommodation that they were leaving, which made them flee for their safety resulting in the suspension of the Saturday recount. ACP Joseph Tondop clarified that police visited candidates Manasse and Don Polius camps on Friday night, asking them to relocate as both parties lived in the same area at the Premier's Hill in Kundiawa. The ACP and the provincial police commander's residences are also at the Premier's Hill, which has posed threats. 
Tondop said police had enough experiences in Wabek during the 2017 election and they do not want a repeat of the similar event in Kundiawa. Tondop said such defamatory and misleading posts will stir up trouble. He urged Polias and Manasseh supporters to report any questionable police conducts to his office or the Internal Investigation Unit for immediate investigation and appropriate actions to be taken. Meanwhile, police will arrest those spreading false statements on Facebook and will charge them under the new Cybercrime Act. Vasanata Yama, National MTV News, Mount Hagen. And National MTV News continues with some sporting updates in Trukai Sports up next. Trukai Sports. Welcome to Shukai Sports. The sudden surge in COVID-19 cases around the country has forced the PNGFA Competition Department and the WNSL Interim Standing Committee to put on hold the staging of the WNSL semi-final matches. The finals were scheduled for this Saturday in Lai. A formal notification was issued to all stakeholders, including the four clubs that qualified for the finals, Poro FC, FC Genesis, Sipik FC and NCD Hekari United FC. PNGFA Competition's Director Paul Isorua and WNSL Committee Chair Lady Diane Peliokai in a joint statement stressed that due to the COVID-19 control measures that are currently put in place by the National COVID-19 Task Force Controller's Office and in light of Prime Minister James Marape's appeal to the nation on Monday, the WNSL semi-finals match day scheduled for this weekend will not proceed as planned. PNGFA Competitions Department and the WNSL Interim Standing Committee shall convene to meet again after Prime Minister James Marape delivers a nationwide address on the COVID-19 pandemic on Wednesday. This will be for a beneficial decision based on the address and also from advice sought from the PNG Sports Foundation's Pandemic Committee as due process. The decision will be submitted to the Office of the General Secretary for further deliberation by the PNGFA Executive Committee for final approval and endorsement. Freddy Sukina, Trukai Sports. Now that story ends Trukai Sports. The weather details for the next 24 hours up next. Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. Cloudy periods with patchy rain, then possible inland morning fog in Port Moresby. Cloudy with a few showers in Daru. Cloudy periods with patchy rain in Kerama. A few overnight showers in Alutau and cloudy with rainy periods and Popandita. In the Mamasa region, brief overnight showers in Lee, mostly fine weather in Medang, and cloudy with a few showers in Wau, Wiwak and Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, mostly fine in Loringau, Kokopo, Rabal and Kimbe, cloudy with a few showers in Kaviang, and partly cloudy with brief early morning showers in Buka. And in the Highlands region, a few overnight showers, then morning fog in Mount Hagen. Brief overnight showers, then morning fog in Goroka, Kondiawa, Mendi and Wabeg. Forecast for small crafts for the next 24 hours. Waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait to Daru and Kewa Islands to Kerama and Yula Island to Hood Point, to Samari Islands, including waters of Samari Island to Cape Vogel and eastern and western Milne Bay Islands, seas of 0.5 to 1.3 meters. Waters of waters north of Cape Vogel to Huon Gulf and Finchhafen, including waters north of Long Island to Medang, 
and we work to IDP, Vanimo and Northern PNG Indonesian border with waters of Manus and its western group of islands, including waters of New Ireland to New Britain and Bougainville, seas of 0.5 to 1 metre. Waters of Inchaffen through Vitiaz and Dampier Straits to CRC and Long Islands, seas of 0.5 to 1.5 metres. A look at the ocean forecast, the PNG areas in the Coral Sea sees slight with east to northeasterly winds at 10 to 15 knots. In the Solomon Sea sees slight with northeast to northwesterly winds at 10 to 15 knots. In the Bismarck Sea sees smooth with northeasterly winds of 5 to 10 knots and in the Pacific Ocean Sea smooth with northeast to northwesterly winds at 5 to 10 knots. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that's been the new sport and weather for today, Tuesday, the 16th of March 2021. From all of us here at MTV News, pleasant viewing. Thank you for joining us. Good night.